welcome to Film Market Hub Talks. My name is Rosalind and I'm the UK manager. And today I'm absolutely delighted to welcome Dorothea Martin, who is an exec producer of original fiction from Audible. Um, so welcome, Dorothea. We are absolutely delighted to have you at Film Market Hub Talks. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> and you're joining us from Berlin today. Yes, I do. Thanks for having me and inviting me to have this talk. I'm very happy. And yeah, I'm uh, in Berlin. Uh, there's our office for the whole um, European Audible part. And I'm um, responsible for the original fiction program of Germany. Yeah. Dorothy, could you start by just uh, letting me and our viewers know how would you how would you describe what is an audio drama and how does it differentiate from an audio book? I start with the audio book because it's so much easier. Basically, an audio book is the recording of a story with one voice or maybe several voices, but it's all in prose, so it's narrated um, like a book. Basically, for audio, we're switching a bit there uh, as well, but uh, compared to an audio drama, which is completely written dialogue, um, so basically like a film script, the audiobook uh, version is much more similar to a book. And the, the script of an audio drama is much closer to screenwriting. There are differences, mm -hmm. and I'm sure we're going uh, to get into that <laughs> step by step. We are really thrilled at Film Market Hub to be doing um, a pitch to pro call for Audible, looking for series scripts for you to be produced as audio dramas. And for anyone watching who is thinking about submitting to this fantastic call, you've got to the 28th of April, that's the deadline. So Dorito, can you explain a little bit, how do you actually adapt a series script into an audio drama? Could you tell us a little bit about that process? And Well, basically, if you have a script uh, written for a movie or a TV series, so something told in audiovisual, you'll always have the part which is told um, by, well, through dialogue, so the characters are, are talking, and then you have the parts uh, like the director's notes, where you try to give the atmosphere and also the room and what we're seeing, basically. So um, all these things uh, in audio, because it's not a visual medium, um, we have to get rid of that or translate that into into audio so basically what uh, what we're trying to do is like imagine the movie <laughs> in our heads uh, just through voices and sounds and um, when you think of the importance of for example music in in a lot of movies and series for atmosphere and emotion um, you you get a, a first feeling and impression I think of the power of the medium uh, that is audio because it's such an immersive way to tell a story with the voice in the head becoming practically you and uh, making you imagine and and filling up all the the things that are described and happening with your own the own images um, you have in your head which is a very very powerful and also fantastic way to create um, all kinds of stories. So creative. Actually, it's a whole other level of creativity, really, just to be, you know, going back to that kind of, I suppose it's quite, um, you know, the ancient practice of storytelling is all by, by voice and by sound. So fantastically creative. Yes, um, it actually is. And I mean, it's a, um, it's a slight switch uh, if you used to write um, for the audiovisual um, um, medium. It's a it's a slight switch to you know adapt to okay how many people can I have in a scene because there are only the voices uh, to differ between characters so people can follow um, how many um, location uh, changes and cutscenes are possible without listeners getting lost. Uh, so all these things um, you have to consider, but that's a small adaptation basically there are things uh, that might be more difficult to adapt to audio something like lord of the flies might be a problem because you have like i don't know 20 boys all the same age sounding really the same basically so either you adapt it down to like four characters or um, it won't be possible i think but these are the things you get used to and and find creative solutions when writing for audio amazing fantastic that's so so imagining, I love it. Um, and do you have, um, I mean, are you looking for a really broad 
range of audio dramas right now or is there other specific kind of genres or stories that you're looking for? Well, I mean, we're basically open for um, a lot of genres. I think one of the one of the um, strengths of audio is that the kind of genres that are too expensive uh, to tell in, uh, in, in, in movies or um, audiovisual series are possible um, in, in audio. So like sci-fi, fantasy, all the big worlds you create and everything, because you're using the imagination of the people. Um, you don't have to create the images. Uh, uh, by shooting them. So um, this is um, a great way, I think, for writers to to get their fantasy and sci-fi scripts out there. But we're also looking, and I think that's uh, when you look back at the history of like radio drama, um, it's like a back to the roots. We're looking for um, comedy and comedy series, um, dramedy, however you might define that, um, is also something. So everything where people can laugh, um, I think in this times, uh, it's also very popular. <laughs> very needed, very needed, I think. Mm -hmm. Would you say that there are other forms of scripture series that are harder to adapt to Audible, or are they all possible? Or is, or is it is it does it really depend on the need um, or the story having enough differentiation of characters and voices? And... Well, one point, as already mentioned, is to have a variety of characters in age, gender, and everything, so it's easier to to differentiate through their their voices. That's one thing, and also not having too many uh, characters mm -hmm. would be a limitation. So um, I'm not really sure if the English expression is right. Chamber play. Um, uh, is something so where you have a li limited number, in, like in theater, where you have a limited number of people and it's very psychological um, yeah. and only one setting, basically. That's something that um, might be adapted also very well uh, to audio. And what's not... Another thing is too many action scenes, like, you know, explosions and everything that um, is heavy on the ears um, gets annoying uh, after some time. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's basically it, I think. Yeah. And um, from your experience at Audible, what would you say are the audio dramas that are having the most success in terms of popularity? What are people tending to gravitate to more? I think we have two big directions. One is this whole area of, I mean, we're talking about Germany and Germany is really very uh, crime and, 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 and thriller um, driven um, when it comes to the taste of the public. And this is something that is reflected in, in our um, in our original uh, fiction as well. So we have um, our biggest successes basically are thrillers, mm, or sci-fi fantasy, um, urban fantasy stories with a crime plot. So something, um, yeah, that keeps the tension high. I think that's also something um, that lets people get immersed into a story world and, and really follow and, and keep going while listening. Um, that's one thing. And the other thing uh, we're realizing is that um, we had a big success with uh, a drama with a history setting based in the 20s in Berlin. It's called Die Juten Sitten by Anna Basner, which was, um, we had music in there and it was very atmospheric, but it also had a crime plot. I think the mixture of, of different genres is possible um, to, to make it successful. And the other uh, big thing is humor. So, yeah. yeah. And what benefits would you, or advantages, would you say that the audio world offers to screenwriters um that would be question number one and then secondly what what would you what would the benefits be for audiences with this new medium i think really one big thing for screenwriters when writing for audio is you are free to let uh, your fantasy and sci-fi um love run wild because it's yeah. just possible um to create yeah. that that's uh, that's one big thing, and I think the other um, because so much gets transported through order, through dialogue is um, really honing the art of um, writing precise 
uh, dialogue and very um, very focused on how it sounds and, and and using different voices also to to characterize people so um, really write for 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 narrators and and, and 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 the talent and what they're capable of which is I think a great way to become probably an even better writer in other in other media as well Fantastic. And, and also audience. evoking sorry sorry, sorry. <laughs> and also evoking images um, 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 for the audience only through voice and and, and music and sound that's um, yeah, I think that's a great way to become an even better uh, writer. Yes, the second question was about the audience. The and, uh... <laughs> yes, no, that was absolutely fantastic. Thank you. So, so interesting. Um, and the second question was, how do the audiences benefit from from audio dramas in terms of what, what how is it different for them? Obviously, it's different from sitting down and watching a movie or a series, but how would you say from your experience, they are engaging with these stories. And I mean, do, do they need to be more attentive to to the story in a different way that they would be if they were sitting down and watching something where you can be a little bit lazy with your habits, <laughs> you know? Yes, yes and no. I think we have two big kinds of audience engagement. So we have, um, for the one hand, we have stories uh, where you can just basically also relax and have this, I think a lot of people, especially now, experience some kind of screen fatigue because everyone is hanging around in video calls the whole day. So audio gives you a way to 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 relax probably a bit more. So that's one of the big um, things. So a lot of people, honestly, um, use audio stories um, for relaxation and also when they go to sleep which is well i don't know <laughs> um i think equally a big part um really wants to get immersed in in stories so this whole take me away thing um uh, get me into the story and and forgetting everything else um without necessarily the need of being focused on a screen which is um yeah i think these are two advantages of audio for the listening experience. And another thing uh, which is very interesting, or I found that very interesting, is Audible was running um, a study with the, oh no, the University of London was running a study uh, for Audible, comparing the reaction, the physiological reaction of people um, watching, reading, and, um, and listening to the same, no, watching and listening to the same um, stories and how they um, what the reactions are and they found out that uh, if you remember the last scene of Game of Thrones um, of the first season which is kind of like a, a big surprise which I don't want to spoil now um, they found out that the physiological reaction like heartbeat and um, um, pulse and everything was much stronger um, when listening to the story instead of watching it so um, it seems to be like with music that there's a connection um, to an older part of the brain, basically, which we can't really control. So uh, very emotional, very strong. And um, I think that um, if that's something you get out of stories, um, um, then audio is really a, a great way to to experience that. Fantastic. That's uh, it's yeah, it, it's so interesting, isn't it? I would not have ever imagined that, but that is so wonderful to hear, actually, because it's it's engaging the imagination in a way, you know, like reading a book in a way that it's your it, you own your what you're seeing in your head. Yeah, in, in, yeah, in a way, that, it's more yeah. stimulating for I imagine, and sort of thinking aloud here, but imagine it's it's way more stimulating um, for your own imagination and your own brain you're engaging with the story on a very individual level yeah somehow from a media consumption um uh, experience it's a bit like in between a book where you have all the freedom because you can easily go back in a story and reread something um compared to a movie where you're uh, completely um into how the director did the movie and and the writer so you're laid back and just have to watch and and the you have the images and everything and with audio it's something in between because the narrator, the, 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 the writer um, guides you through the story. It's maybe harder to go back at some point, but um, you have the freedom to create your own images um, like with a book. So it's like, 
yeah, I think it's a cool mixture. <laughs> It's very cool. I, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I'm going to be really honest. I haven't really started engaging with this, but I'm, I'm totally sold. I'm going to, <laughs> I'm totally sold. <laughs> um, what, what original audio dramas have you already produced? I'm sure there's loads, but could you give us like maybe some of your favorites? Just tell us a little bit about the ones that have, the original ones that have been produced. Well, I um, the examples we did are uh, in German, basically, but um, there's also um, a really, really uh, great English uh, one which we're going to produce in, in, in German as well. It's called Evil Eye. It's like a close to two hour stories, uh, which is um, nearly completely told through uh, telephone calls, very engaging, very uh, surprising as well because you think um, you are in one genre and then it suddenly it switches and you realize oops <laughs> there's something going on so very very engaging I really I was starting to listening to it and I on my way back uh, home and I came um, through the door and instead of uh, switching it off I just sat down and listened to the rest of it because it was like oh my god oh my god really <laughs> so th this is I think a, a great way um, to grasp the, the the power of audio um, and um, great audio dramas we did um, are, for example, um, the Auris uh, trilogy by Sebastian Fitzek and uh, Vincent Kleech, which is um, a story about um, a forensic, um, oh, bummer, what's the word in English? Um, so it's a specialist um, for sounds um, working for the police and <laughs> Oh, uh, no, ah, I forget the word, but anyways, oh, um, and it's told in three parts and was a really large success in, 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 in Germany and um, it's very engaging as well. But then something like Blackout, which is more like a, um, uh, a sci-fi tech thriller, also very fast paced and, and, and engaging, or the one um, told before, the Jutensitten by... Um, by Anna Basena, where you are back in the 20s in Berlin and have the whole atmosphere and everything. And um, if that might be interesting for, for some people, we also have cool audio books, <laughs> like the Übergangsmanager, which is, which is told in, in chapters, which you can like listen to like a series or a podcast, but it's only one narrator, which is also, I think, a cool way because it's more snackable, maybe. Um, from a size. So yeah, these are some examples of our uh, production over the last years. <laughs> Fantastic. And I uh, actually coming back to Evil Eye, because Evil Eye started as an audio drama and is now, I believe it's being adapted into a live action in, um, yes. by, by Prime Video. Is, is that yes. right? It's, yes. it's, so that's a very, very interesting journey really for for a writer isn't it to start with a with a, a, a wonderful medium in its own right but then to see that be then translated and adapted again into an actual live action film would you would you see that actually like i would say in, in the uk specifically now obviously we've mentioned radio drama before theater or novel writing not always nowadays but like i think there's there's, there's been traditions of writers starting in that medium and then going into the screen whereas um, could, could you predict, could you see that actually we're going to see more screenwriters kind of gravitating towards the audio um, drama route um, as, a, as, a, as one medium to express their voice, but then perhaps through that, having the opportunity to move more into live action as well? Or do you think actually, it's a very distinctive type of writing? Well, it is a distinctive um, kind of writing, but good stories are um, universal, I think. So um, I think Evil Eye is just like a first example of something we're going to see more often, um, hopefully. And um, because it's, I don't know. I mean, the hunger for stories in, in any medium is like huge. So um, audio, because it's booming um, um, a lot at the moment, is I think a great way to, to get more interest um, for other medium as well. And we are also 
pushing that too because we want our talent you know and we want our our ips to to grow and and become even more popular um so i think yeah writing audio dramas and pitching stories to us might be a great way to get back to the medium where the writer originated so and i mean it's also a homecoming would be another example of podcasts and i think there are many more um, that also get turned into series already and and actually you mentioned podcasting um which has obviously been gaining a lot of attention for a number of years now and do you, do you think that the interest in the success of podcasting is kind of reflecting in the growing interest in surge and kind of interest in audio dramas do you feel there's a kind of relationship between the two like people are kind of absolutely yeah yeah it's really funny you know because when you, you're looking for books on storytelling you find uh so many um but you don't find a lot um on the specific uh, art of writing for audio drama you only find writing for podcast which um, then refers to the whole um, screenwriting tradition there is so it's, it's really funny because it's, it's turning um <laughs> around to to where is the expertise and how do you do that but how it reflects um i think in audio production is in um i can say that for Germany, maybe specifically, uh, the audio drama tradition we had was very focused on using the narrator as a way to do all the atmospheric thing and describe where are we and and, and everything. But with um, stories like Evil Eye, that's not necessary anymore. So it becomes even more direct and more, um, maybe even a bit faster. Um, so it changes uh, podcasts and also the the way fictional podcasts um, in um, in the US and the UK are. So that's the language I speak best. So uh, these are the one I can refer to. Um, are told uh, will influence our way to to produce and also to write um, audio dramas um, heavily. I think. I was going to ask this, but it's just come to me with the. When you have the IP of, say, a novel writer, um, is that something that you're working with as well? Are you having novelists coming to you wanting to kind of translate their book into an audio drama? Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's actually something too. So um, the example Blackout I was mentioning um, is based on a, on a novel, um, on a bestseller by um, Mark Ellsberg. So um, that's also something very interesting. If you have uh, an existing novel, which might be a good fit to adapt uh, into audio drama. And um, would you say that when writing an audio drama, um, the scriptwriter has more creative control of their idea, you know, throughout the process than, say, in a TV or film, when it's um, you know, a lot more. A lot, you know, there's, a, there's, a, there's a greater collaboration maybe in the process, or or how is the process for you when working with the writers? Is it very collaborative, or um... it is a it is a collaborative process. So basically, normally how um, a collaboration starts is um, either we have a call of papers like with you, um, where we get um, ideas pitched, and then uh, if an idea um, um, is attractive for us. Um, Normally, if it's not just um, like this call of paper, we um, we order like a, a, a treatment. So the whole outline, characters, and a first episode, um, we feedback. And after that, if that works out and we find the same language and, and everything, we order like a whole series. Um, and there the writer gets regular. Back, um, and also um, in a creative kickoff gets to know like um, the the narrator perspective and the director perspective so the whole production thing because that's something very valuable in the writing process um, to to know a bit more about that because film probably most people know how it works but um, what narratives need in a script and also what's um, elementary for production um, in audio might be something new so there's like a creative kickoff and then uh, the writer starts off writing and we get to back together when the script is complete. And in total, I think there are probably less people involved providing feedback and therefore mingling with the 
creative vision um, than um, for a movie, but um, there is some kind of collaboration which is just necessary in the medium as well. Um, yeah, I, that sounds great. Really, like really constructive, like way to work. Um, and uh, finally, Dorothea, I'm. Mean, with, with the pitched protocol that we, we have open right now, obviously, you know, hopefully there's lots of people watching this, going to be watching this, who are going to be submitting to that call. Um, what advice um, would you give to a script writer who's got great material or they're working on something for, for this pitched protocol and they're, you know, considering submitting to it? Could you give them any advice? Well, <laughs> um, Basically, with every pitch, I think it um, it's like a special art form to pitch in a very short way um, and make the uniqueness of your characters um, shine. But that's also for us a sign of is someone capable of doing that, which is also I think important um, because in dialogue, it sometimes you have the problem of information dumping so if people are able to you know wrap up stuff really short and transport the idea um uh, in very like three sentences like this uh, log line elevator pitch thing this gives us um, a hint of does the person have this talent um for example and the other thing i think is really going all in um for characters so i think audio in general is a very character driven uh, medium so yes the plot is important and everything but it should come from the characters and their motivation and they don't have to be you know we don't have to feel sympathy for them necessarily but they have to be psychologically sound so we have to um there has to be some kind of how we can relate to them in in what they do so um, to make it interesting also and yeah well conflict and and all that stuff uh, <laughs> everyone else is also um talking about but i think characters um really most important thing for us that's fantastic well Thank you so much. This has been so, so interesting to hear about the work that Audible are doing and just the whole kind of medium how it works. And we're absolutely thrilled to be doing this um, pitch to pro tour for you. So we hope that we'll, we hope today we've inspired some of the people out there with, with some inspiration for their submissions. And we look very forward very much to, to submitting these projects to you sort of later this year. Um, is there is there anything else on your heart you you have to say about sort of your work or um, Audible or where you see it going? Um, well, I think no. First of all, thank you for this opportunity to talk about um, storytelling for audio at Audible, which is just um, like a great thing. <laughs> I think one aspect um, that might be interesting is because in Berlin we have other marketplaces, the other European marketplaces there as well. So we are also always in close exchange uh, with our international colleagues and also trying to, you know, like um, make international productions from the beginning. So this might be something very attractive um, for screenwriters too. That was maybe. <laughs> I think so, definitely. I think any way where writers can, you know, hone their craft in a different way. And it, I, I think just from what you've been explaining to me today, so it's, it's you know, it's such a different way of telling a story, but actually a very creative way. So I think it provides writers with, with a wonderful challenge, but also an opportunity to get their stories out there. And as you said, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of their creativity. You don't have, they don't have to think, oh, I have to, this budget has to be, you know, set in a few rooms, a few locations, especially for emerging writers. I think it, you know, it allows them to, to be as creative and wild as they want to with the worlds they're creating. So I think that's going to appeal massively to, to any writer. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, thank you so much for joining us today, Dorota. It's been absolutely wonderful to have you and we're really excited about the Pitch to Pro and we look forward very much hopefully to having you back one day in the future. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that, that, that would be great. And um, yeah, we're looking um, very much forward to all your creative ideas. And um, thanks a lot for the collaboration. And to you. Thank you so much. <laughs>